Hi everyone, I'm Scott Schneider and this is Stereo Niche. Hey, this week it's about a subject I've not touched on before, and that's music formats. So this week I thought I would talk about the different formats and some of my own preferences. So we're going to talk about reel-to-reel, -reel, cassette, 8-track, CD, and records. Stick around. Right. Well, thank you guys for sticking around. So the reason I'm doing this, uh, this video is because I recently had a question about what type of music formats do I listen to? So I put some thought into it and I thought, well, you know, instead of just typing out the answer, I would uh, do a quick video because I started realizing it's been a bit of an evolution for me. Uh, so in prep for that discussion, I thought, well, I'll set up you know, a, a media uh, for each one and the gear that plays it and a piece of that media as well. So that's my little uh, setup here. Um, so I'll just jump right into it and I'll talk about each one, my experience with it and, um, you know, where I have been along my, uh, my journey, if you will, of listening to music. So I'm going to start out with the, uh, the eight track and I'm starting out here because it's one format that I've, I really don't have any experience with. Um, the 8-track, it was, uh, the only experience I had with it were through relatives uh, back in the 60s and the early 70s because it was, I think, the only widely available mobile media format. Um, a lot of my relatives had an 8-track player in their car. And I do recall, you know, a lot of them throwing in that eight track, you know, and listening to it. But what I don't recall is them raving about the sound quality. It was convenient, but it didn't seem to have the best, you know, uh, quality on the playback. And, you know, I do recall uh, his comments, you know, about the lack of the quality, but it was convenient nonetheless. Um, so for that reason, I, I've never um, invested in any of it. I've never owned any of it. Even after I became a collector, I never have sought them out. Uh, they, this one I have here is a uh, player and a recorder. That's the other thing. I've, uh, although you can record to a tracks, I don't recall ever seeing blanks, but obviously they, they must have sold them. And I don't recall anyone that I knew anyway making their own eight tracks. Um, so interesting. I, I, I keep it for sort of a conversation piece, to be honest with you. I do find it interesting. I've set it up a couple of times and have played. I have about five or six eight tracks. And uh, so I've played it, um, I think, mainly to uh, show my kids, you know, and some other people what an eight track is. Because a lot of people, it's been quite a while since they've been out there. And a lot of people don't know what an eight track is anymore. Uh, so that's the eight track. Um, moving on into the reel to reel. Now the reel to reel, I think most uh, of the vintage audio formats, I think it's most people would say that the reel to reel is the highest level quality playback. And I, I wouldn't argue that point. Um, but for me, I've never had much exposure to it other than my own grandfather had a reel to reel. But what he did with it was typically make his own recordings. He would record radio shows and things like that. And that was pretty much it. And I really rarely did I ever see him play the thing. But I do know, and, and everyone that has owned them and has invested their time and energy into them raves about them. And I think any, you know, high-end audiophile, certainly, they certainly look impressive sitting on top of the stack and they've got the big reels on there. I, you know, don't argue that point. I think they look cool. Uh, this is not a high-end reel-to-reel here, but I have owned several and I've sold them. And part of the reason is because even though I have accumulated, you know, a lot of them over the years, what I've not accumulated is much in the way of commercial media. It, um, for the most part, it did seem like the usage of them tended to evolve around making their own recordings. So when I would buy a system or a collection, I do have uh, quite a bit of media, but it's home recordings. It's not commercial. So for that reason, I've never gotten into a reel-to-reel. -reel. Um, you know, it's also not quite convenient. You do have to feed the tape and put it on the reel. And after you've heard it, you got to rewind it. You know, there's a lot more effort uh, to playing reel-to-reel -reel than there is with other formats. So, 
you know, for those reasons, I, I've just not gotten into it, uh, even though I've, you know, gotten into collecting. So looking at the cassette, uh, the cassette for me, um, I started driving in 1981, but uh, just prior to that, our cars had cassettes in them and uh, we listened to them. My parents would buy them and every car that I can remember pretty much had a cassette deck in it. Even if it was an older car, uh, you put an aftermarket stereo in there, to, you know, and it played cassettes. And that was, uh, for many, many years, uh, the preferred, it was the media format, of course, uh, for quite some time. What my friends and I would do is uh, we would get an album, and then the first play of that album would be on taping it, you know, on a cassette. And then we had a good backup, you know, a good copy of that that we would listen to. And because we didn't have much money, uh, what we would often do is a, my friend would buy one album, I would buy a different album, and then, you know, we'd get together and make a recording and each of us can, you know, can have that, you know, album on cassette and, it, you know, listen to it at our convenience. We would have a, a cassette player in the house and then in our cars. So highly portable, you know, fairly indestructible, and um, the quality was, you know, pretty good, uh, you know, not horrible. Now, after I, you know, went on to college, I did not buy much in the way of media. I bought albums occasionally, but, you know, being a college student, I was cash strapped. So I didn't continue to invest in it. By the time I got out of college, you know, I had moved on to other formats. So it sort of, uh, I sort of faded out of it. But when I got into collecting, just like this is a very, very nice uh, Pioneer um, Elite cassette deck. It's a, it's a very good cassette deck. And while I have great cassette decks, again, what I haven't found a lot of, although I will say partly because I haven't really sought them out, is a lot of actual media. And it is a media that I'm going to start keep continuing to look for, um, start to look for, and keep an eye out on because I do want to add to my collection of cassettes. So it is a format that I do plan to add to, but up to now, uh, I just haven't done much with it. But um, you know, I'm going to continue moving forward and looking for them. The CD. Now, for me, by the time I graduated college, the CD was it. Everyone, everything, album sales had, you know, continued to plummet and CD sales continued to increase. So by the, by the latter part of the 80s, when I got out of college and got another, I got my next better uh, stereo system, it was only CDs. I didn't buy a single album anymore. In fact, I had given up my turntable and got rid of my albums at that point. And so I bought over through the 90s, I ended up buying hundreds of CDs. You know, I get part of the, the online club and really started getting, you know, my, uh, my collection going um, over those, my library, you know, over those years. But it was only um, mostly groups from that period onward. I didn't go back and buy older uh, groups very often. I did occasionally, but not that often. So uh, the other thing that supported it was the fact that I, the cars, you know, our cars pretty much only had CDs in them at that time. And then I bought a CD changer to put in the trunk and man, that, that was it. I, I didn't listen to anything else. Um, and then around, you know, the mid part of the nineties or so, I eventually got a CD burner and was able to create my own playlist and you know, from there on, I just, that's the only thing I did uh, was with CDs. After that, you know, so I got married in the early 2000s. And then for a period of time, I actually got out of music pretty much altogether. I uh, ended up selling my CD player. I literally just didn't play music anymore. I had children and all that. And for a number of years, I didn't have any music until that day when I decided I'm going to put, you know, I'm going to go buy a vintage stereo. It was at that point that uh, it sort of changed completely. I bought, the first system I bought had a turntable. And so at that single point in time, once I got that turntable, I turned my attention to finding albums again. And everywhere I went, if I was going to a garage sale or a Goodwill, I would seek them out and I would go straight to the record section and I would buy records and I would find, you know, quality used records Back then, of course, you could find them for about a 50 cents to a dollar a piece. And I kept buying them and buying them and buying them. Now, in addition to the music that I didn't capture on CD, that was roughly the 70s, the music genre I tend to listen to is, you know, classic rock, pop. 
you know, during that time frame. So I was initially going back and buying more classic rock of the 70s and even late 60s. But as I got into it more and more, I added on jazz to that as well and went all the way back to the 50s and started buying jazz and classic rock. So now, if, uh, if I, I don't really have a great way of showing off my media, but if, I, if you were to look at the, the inventory that I have, my library, I have roughly 200 CDs, but I have five to 600 albums. And so I have eclipsed my CD collection you know, by a good bit. Um, although I've run across CDs, I honestly, I haven't uh, really sought them out. There's something uh, more tactile, more physical for me about an album than a CD. Even though I, I love the format, uh, I, I tend to feel more invested when I pull out an album and I get it out of the cover and I put it on and I, you know, put the needle on there. There's something, um, just more involved. I'm committed, if you will, to listening to that album. And I think part of it is the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm involved in every part of it, not just throwing it in the tray and hitting play. It's a bit of, you know, being very careful with it. It's delicate media. I had set up the turntable, configured it, and, you know, being very careful in putting that needle on the record. Um, for me, it's, um, it's more pleasant, but I do know that part of it is the fact that it's the nostalgia as well. Um, there are certain speakers that I don't like to listen to, album, to records on. Those tend to be electrostats because they are so um, unforgiving. They pick up everything and you hear everything. Um, I prefer to play uh, records on more forgiving speakers uh, that you know don't sort of um, pick up every nuance as much as electrostats do. So in my house, uh, which I haven't shown you guys yet, but I do have uh, electrostats set up. And um, at this point in time, they are uh, um, Altec Big Reds, actually. And uh, great speakers, both of them. And so I do tend to play albums on one and CDs on the other. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's sort of uh, my evolution of media and music formats and how it's evolved for me. So um, let me know you guys' thoughts. You know, um, how's your experience? If, if, you know, I'm sure there's some similarities there, but I'd love to know, you know, what you guys are doing today, how you got here. Did you ever leave records? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys, you know, I appreciate you dialing in here and watching. If you don't wanna miss the next video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and um, hit that notification bell as well if you wanna get notified. And as always, thank you guys for tuning in.